Carol Menatic. I've been working with Elasticsearch for like two years. I wrote a, a Ruby library tire, which maybe someone uh, uses. And this is Lukasz Wilczek. Yeah, my name is Lukasz Wilczek. I work for Red Hat. Maybe you remember me from last year because I was here in Berlin. I was presenting uh, my work that I do uh, with Elasticsearch in, a, in a JBoss because I work in JBoss, which is part of the Red Hat. And I, uh, I was presenting my uh, activity that I implement search for JBoss or community content. So it's, since then, it's, it's been already released. It's in production. So if you go to the search.jboss.org, you will see uh, something that, that I was presenting here year before, year ago. So how are we doing with the Wi-Fi? Uh, you, can, you can see on the screen, uh, I need to connect to the Elasticsearch Wi-Fi, which is running over that phone, uh, which hopefully will provide, a, provide us connection between the node. <laughs> so we're back again. Yeah. Who? Yeah, it looks better, definitely. I'm trying it. No. No, 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 no. Ah, oh, that's, that's bad. Yeah, great. Sorry. Uh, I think I'm connected as well, right? Cool. Okay, thank you, uh, unknown member of the audience. Uh, to provide us, uh, it's a co cooperation. There's a connection. So, what we have here, um, we will have a couple of Elasticsearch nodes, and we will show you how they connect, how they share data, and effectively what you've been uh, listening to in Shai Bannon's talk and uh, Rafael Kuch's talk, uh, how the shard allocation and distribution of data inside a cluster works. Uh, so I'll run a node here on this computer. Uh, and I'll use this configuration. So this is a cluster name. And I'll use my name as the node name. Uh, not many people know that you can actually rename the Elasticsearch node, so your nodes don't have to be like Sunny Girl with Machete or something like that. So you can rename them. Uh, we've built a tool specifically for this talk. Uh, it looks like this. We call it Paramedic. And right now, you can see that we have a cluster barrel and buzzword. It's one node. We can see a couple of metrics here. We built, um, explain what they mean. And this is the information uh, on my note. Carol, I think, I think we, we can need run to share the screen. Yeah, the share screen thing. <laughs> OK. So. Because what we are currently uh, doing right now, yes, here it is. Share the screen. OK, so this it, is it's, it's my screen. Don't touch the mouse. OK, it, okay it's sorry. It's your mouse. <laughs> Just need. Just need one thing. Um, I just need your IP address, Carol. My IP address. Just tell me, please. Yeah. Okay. So my IP address should be here. Forty-three. Forty-three and one. Cool. Come on. Oh, yeah. So I'm currently uh, running Big Desk here. It's stretched. It's OK. I think I can make it bigger. Cool. Um, so Big Desk is another tool uh, that I've been developing for some time. It's, it's a very lightweight tool that allows you to connect to the uh, cluster, Elasticsearch cluster. And you can see active nodes. And it's, it's collecting some statistics. Basically, it's uh, built on top of uh, the Elasticsearch uh, node stats API. The node stats API can give you a lot of details about machines, operating systems, and things like that, uh, in case that you know, <laughs> it relies on a cigar uh, library. So maybe if you 
have been using uh, Big Desk, you may notice that not in every case uh, all the statistics can be returned. One of the reasons can be if you run Elasticsearch as a user that does not have the privileges to read all the data from the system, you will not see it in, in the Big Desk. But anyway, uh, it, it's a very lightweight tool. You don't need any other external storage. Uh, it just periodically pulls the JSON data and it keeps it in a web browser memory. <coughs> so uh, that's, that's basically it. Yeah, uh, it's written in JavaScript, the same thing as the uh, parametrics. So it's very easy to write such tools for Elasticsearch because it exposes JSON responses. Uh, this one is written in Ember.js and uh, Big Disk is written in Backbone. Yeah. And I think the cluster is now kind of like dull, so let's add another node and see what happens. Yeah, let's start indexing some data. Or indexing. create an index. Okay, so let's create an index. Uh, we have a couple of uh, Ruby scripts to uh, ease the creation of indices and storing data. Uh, they are on GitHub. We will publish the URL after the talk, so you can check it out and maybe uh, even uh, try it yourself. You can see that we've set the number of shards for the index to three. And basically, this is how it looks like. You can see a, a little spike here with the CPU and Elasticsearch you know, created in the index. Uh, you can see something is happening with the memory. And right now, we have an empty index only on my node. So what happens if you launch a node at your computer? Yeah, I will just want to join the cluster. So I'm starting a new node. And hopefully. Yeah, I'll set the polling to one second so it's faster. It uh, needs more resources from the machine, but it's faster. Okay. Yeah, we can see the charts have changed effectively. We can now see the CPU on my computer and Lucas' computer, also the CPU for the Elasticsearch process. We can see my process uh, spiked a bit. And <clears throat> this is what happened. The index was effectively split between the nodes. So right now, my computer has two parts of the index, and Lucas' node has one part of the index. So I think we should like, put some data in. So there's some numbers to I think we have some see. enemy here. Sorry? I think we have some enemy here. What? Well, I see a third node that has just joined. I, I haven't started anything. Oh, that's another node. Yeah, oh. who was that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's uh, Clinton. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. It, this yeah. is what happens when you trust people, you know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like when, in good faith, you know, lend your Wi Fi or something. Yeah. So, could you please maybe kill the node and. Uh, yeah, and basically spoil the full talk, you know? So, uh, yeah, no problem. We can recover. So I think we'll start afresh, you know. So we can just uh, delete everything in Elasticsearch. Uh, notice that such command can be highly suspicious in production environments. There is actually a flag uh, to disable these things. So uh, you may want to do that uh, in production. So Definitely. let's return where we were uh, with one index and two nodes. You can see I am still the master node of the cluster. And when we now uh, import some documents, put some documents into it, uh, it's again a Ruby script which in four processes puts data in, so it's yeah. faster. Maybe in the meantime I can, I, I can introduce Clinton. Uh, he's the author of the... I recognize that guy? You know him? Yeah, that's him. <laughs> Uh, he's the author of the Perl module for uh, Elasticsearch, so if you, if you want to use Elasticsearch from the Perl, he's the best guy to talk to, probably. <laughs> right. So, yeah, how we are done with the indexing? Yeah, well, cool. uh, they have put 100,000 uh, of documents in the cluster. You can see uh, it's fairly imbalanced right now because on my node, there's something like 30,000. Uh, and at Lucas node, it's like 76. So it's fairly imbalanced uh, for queries and faceting. That node would be kind of overloaded. Would be beneficial to spread it more evenly. So, so maybe, maybe now we can invite. Now, now, now is the um, proper moment <laughs> to join us. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you can see again uh, the charts are redrawn, and we can see the charts for all of them. And as it happens, the shards were relocated in the cluster, and right now there's an even split. So let's try to put even more data in. Let's put uh, something like uh, 200,000 documents there. And let's see what it does with the cluster metrics. We should see a spike on my machine again because that's uh, well, it's not a good way how to write a number, right? Uh, so you can see a spike on my machine because Ruby is now working hard to create all those documents in memory, and not so much for Elasticsearch. It's not receiving the data yet, uh, but it should be uh, in a couple of moments. We should see here Elasticsearch spiking, the memory going up, and probably the indexing operations should be shown. Again, Elasticsearch exposes lots and lots of metrics uh, for indexing and querying and, and all that. And yeah, we can see in this part that from zero CPU, we got something like 200 and something. And the indexing operations are evenly sp split on all those nodes. The HTTP connections went way up on my machine. Yeah, so it distributed a lot. Yeah, maybe it, it would be fair to say, as, as you can realize, each of our computers holds just one shard. So it would be very dangerous if we lose one of our nodes. Probably we should not do it right now because we are running out of the time. But maybe, because the problem would be that we would lose the data, right? Maybe we can try it. I don't know, but I don't know if this guy's believable, you know. I, I hopefully he stays up. Oh, no, he, I didn't. He got disappointed. Okay. He so left that's us. the thing which happened, you know, for the first time. The rat. Oh. Yeah. It looks pretty bad, but I don't think maybe it, it's not very, that bad at all. We lose data, that's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. But maybe we are still able to search the data, right? Really? I yeah, don't know. Right. What, what you think? Right. Yeah, okay. It looks so. These are the test documents we have in the cluster. And as it happens, Elasticsearch returns uh, pretty good information about what happened uh, during the search. So you can see the search hit total three shards. Only two of them were successful. One failed, and you can see the information on a failed shard, so it's shard yeah. number one. I think we can even try to index new data right now. Index yep. into the red cluster? Right. Okay. Okay. We've got a script again, a very simple Ruby script to store the document. And now, okay. 201 means created, so yeah, it should be there somewhere. Let's try again, you know, search it. Uh, let's see, query is hello. And yeah, it's there. So that's kind of good. That's kind of good. The cluster looks pretty dead, but it's operational. Yeah. Happily serves queries, but the problem is we lose data. Yeah, we should probably invite Clinton back. So uh, would you please? Yeah, Clinton, would you please again join the <laughs> okay. cluster? Welcome back. Kindly. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. But what if he decides, you know, to, well, to leave again? I think we should think about what we can do to, you know, prevent such a, such a thing. So I think what we can do is to increase the number of replicas, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's see uh, what will happen. I am increasing number I'll of... I'll put your screen uh, in there, oh. so... Yeah. It's In effect, yeah, that this is what's happening right yeah. now. Replicas are effectively copies uh, of the index. So when you say index dot number of replicas one, it means one copy uh, of each chart. Maybe we can switch to the big desk right now. Yeah, OK. Ah, you lost me. I think you lost me. What happened? I think we are disconnected. You got disconnected? Yeah. Oh, you got I can still see you. 
how was your Wi-Fi, Clinton? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm okay. Yeah, but probably something went bad. Yeah. Uh, share the screen. I think that's the only problem. Share screen. Yeah. So I'll reconnect. It's not a problem. Let's. Yeah, let's I think that's the only switch problem. Switch it off. And so last search did not again. break. Apple technology broke. Yep. Yeah. That's <laughs> Apple thing, you know? Not right now. No. No. No luck. I don't know. Yeah, I think okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so by the way, this is the new thing that I'm working on a big desk. <coughs> <Pardon. coughs> Oh my God. Yeah, that was his joke. He was keeping it for late. Um, so this is the visualization, live visualization of the of the cluster. How the indices are replicated? They are already replicated into uh, among the three nodes. We have uh, already one spare replica after each shard. But uh, that's not in the master yet. That's something that needs to be improved, and hopefully it will be soon in the in the big desk. So we can. Yeah, but it's the same picture. You yeah, see, it's uh, just different visualization. Different of the visualization data. you see in paramedics. So you can see those initializing shards where, like, they they are green now. They were properly relocated. So uh, right now, when Clinton shuts down the node, we should yeah. be green, right? Yeah. So because please. we have a copy of each index. Yeah, they're briefly yellow because again, it's relocating the shards. Yeah. And after a moment, it should be again green. Uh, the replicas should be again split. We are and green. right now, we haven't even split. Yeah. You can see the index is evenly split across the nodes one, zero, yeah. two. <laughs> but there is also another feature that we want to show. Yeah, yeah because what if we want like Clinton's node, but for something else, like to serve uh, some another index or something, and not mess it with this index, something like that? Yeah, something yeah, like could that. You, Clinton, may we please join us again? Yeah. So right now, it should again relocate, uh, relocate the shards. But uh, you've seen the setting, the exclude, uh, exclude uh, API or setting here. Uh, you can use IDs, you can use tags. In current version, to, uh, in master, you can use name, I guess. So uh, let's try to put uh, Clinton's ID here and see what happens. By the way, it's interesting that Elasticsearch is more stable than Apple. Ah, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is, this is it. Yeah, you can see it's relocating. And after a moment, it should again, like, split, split the nodes, split the shards across the nodes, I'm sorry. And leave that node, like, standing by. Like, you may want to use that node for another index, another operations, uh, something like that. And it's possible to do it with the exclude allocation API. So one node is kind of taking very long. It's taking longer. Two nodes. Yeah, we can see that the machine working mostly is mine and also Clinton's. So this is this is in effect how to how to work with shard locations and stuff like that. Usually, the thing is, this usually works very well in Elasticsearch. So you either don't believe it or don't care about it. But this is very highly tunable, um, highly tunable to do. Are we still on the same network? Or? I don't know, but we are out of the time. Yeah, we are over the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately. So. Yeah. So basically, that's uh, I'm sorry, that's it. Uh, these are the uh, these are the URLs for 
for uh, the tools we used and for the scripts we used. Uh, the uh, paramedic is not yet open source, so we may as well open source it here. Yeah, you can. Yeah, do. why not? Uh, maybe if, if there are any questions. Yeah, maybe not on this network, right? <laughs> uh, so we yeah, use all his roaming data. I think, Carol, we should ask people if they have any questions. Yeah, please, if you have any questions, uh, ask them. Danger zone. I'm, re I'm really sorry. Okay. But we are running out of time, so I think we have to come to an end. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for this really interesting demo. Thank you.